Hello and welcome to the 11th annual B Movie Marathon. I am tonight's visual host for you, everyone's favorite, number one with a bullet, Michael Hayes. And with that, that's all the introductions we need because Paul Brooks, Jason Holes, and Chris Hudson are all, I don't know, off screen doing, well, getting ready to watch these movies and also watching this right now with you. It's the first time they've seen it as well. So it's kind of weird that I'm really getting this meta with it, but I'm panicking because eh. anyway, so uh, fuck it. Let's just get this thing started. All right. We're going to kick things off tonight with the movie called Black Dynamite. It is the first film of the night to feature a prosthetic penis. If you can find the other one, let us know. Well, that was fun. The next movie for tonight is Streets of Fire. The tagline for this movie was originally, tonight is what it means to be young. And when producer Joel Silver saw the poor box office showing of this film, he quoted, he's been, God damn it! He quoted saying, tonight is what it's like to be dead. So we're gonna get to find out what he means by that. Streets of Fire, everybody. Steve Wang and Screamin' Mad George co-directed this next film, and it's Dynamite. Jimmy Walker's in it too. The Giver's up next on the 11th annual B Movie Marathon. This next movie was supposed to be a 20-minute segment in the director's other 1985 film, American Drive-In but he decided to stretch it out into 90 minutes and give it all to us that way. So we'll figure out what he feels like, that, why that was necessary. Uh, this is uh, Hard Rock Zombies. Thanks, Jay. David Mooney plays the titular The Baby in this next film, though he's credited 12th for some reason, which is probably something to whine about. So up next is 1973's The Baby. Here we go. It's the shitter block. They say this next movie is about a mad scientist named Dr. Flatingstein. And if you can find that plot of Dr. Flatingstein making sex slaves within this hunk of shit, please call 1-900-SEXKILLA, because that's the name of the movie, Sexkilla. It's up next in the shitter block. Originally written by Ed Wood, this 1998 film stars Billy Zane, Tippi Hedren, Christina Ricci, Andrew fucking McCarthy, and I've never seen it, and I don't know why, because that cast list and, you know, written by Ed Wood, that sounds great, but apparently it's abysmal. So up next is I Woke Up Early the Day I Died. Great fucking title of a movie. Rounding out the shitter block is Monsters of the Id, a 2007 film that was written, directed, edited, and animated by one guy, Laurie Calvert, in 2007. And he got some bigger names to be in it, including Warwick fucking Davis. He's in this. So, woo! Let's, let's get animated and finish off this shitter block. All right, it's cell block time, which means it's the theme block we picked this year, and each of us chose a film that takes place in a prison. Up first is the shortest and lowest box office grossing film of the Ernest franchise, which is uh, kind of a bit shocking. Know what I mean? Get it? Shocking? Eh, if not, you'll get it. It's Ernest Goes to Jail, starting off the cell block. <laughs> Be the first to add trivia to the IMDb page for this next film, Death Row Diner. It's a shot on video, 1988 comedy sort of shit fest. So, you know, get famous that way. Shadow Dead Riot. Up next in the cell block is Shadow Dead Riot. 
This is the film debut of Silver Fox and international award-winning burlesque dancer, April Showers. And speaking of showers, all the shower scenes in this film were filmed after hours at a, a local gym. Plus Candyman's in this, so that's cool. Yeah, Shadow Dead Right, up next in the cell block. The final film of the cell block is the story of Riccio. A film in which the finale had so much blood, it took three days to wash it off of the stars. Three days to wash the blood off of the stars. It is a bloody mess. It's a Japanese classic, the story of Riccio. Taste the biscuit. <laughs> One more time. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. That's lyrics to a song that we're gonna hear, and yeah, it's called Chicken in the Shadows. It's a mockumentary, and I taste the biscuit, whatever that means. A Picasso trigger is a type of tropical fish. And unrelated, the dolphins shown in this film all committed suicide. And that's unrelated because dolphins are mammals, not fish. Up next is Picasso Trigger, Andy Sedaris' uh, movie, a movie with boobs. And very upset dolphins. Picasso Trigger. I want you all to sit back and take in the next film, Nah, Food of the Gods 2. And I'd like you to get the fuck out of here! Oh, it's all get out of here! To close out the main part of the marathon, we have the 1981 film Possession, a film that Sam Neill once said was his favorite film he was never in. Never in. What does that mean, Sam? And that's it. My job is done. I've introduced all the movies to you. So I don't have to do anything else except one last thing. Well, two last things. One is to thank you all for watching. If you're here at the end, we really appreciate that. And if you're not here, fuck you. Um, and two, send it over to Jay because he has a special announcement for maybe a little something going on after this. Jay? Thanks, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and fellow lovers of the silver screen, today we gather here to honor a film that has carved its unique path in the realm of B-movies, a film that, despite its flaws and quirks, has captured the hearts of fans worldwide. I stand before you to induct the unforgettable Illegal Aliens, starring the late Anna Nicole Smith and the extraordinary Joni Lauer into the B-movie mania hall of fame. It is bittersweet that we bestow this honor upon a film that features two actresses who are no longer with us. Anna Nicole Smith and Joni Lauer, both icons in their own right, left behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain. Their untimely departure reminds us of the fragility of life and the tragedy of unfulfilled potential. Illegal Aliens may not have been a critical darling or a box office sensation, but it possesses an undeniable charm a whimsical spirit that transports us to a world where the absurd becomes the norm. It's a testament to the power of B-movies, where creativity and resourcefulness prevail over big budgets and flashy productions. In this film, Anna Nicole Smith and Joni Lauer shine brightly, injecting their characters with humor, wit, and undeniable charisma. Their performances, filled with both comedic timing and a genuine vulnerability, remind us of their incredible talents. Despite the limitations of the script, they brought their unique energy to the screen, leaving an undeliable mark on the hearts of the fans. We honor Illegal Aliens today, not only for the film itself, but also as a tribute to the extraordinary lives and careers of Anna Nicole Smith and Joni Lauer. In their all too short time with us, they pushed boundaries, challenged conventions, and left an everlasting impact on the world of entertainment. Let us celebrate this film as a testament to their spirit, their determination, and their unyielding dedication to their craft. 
May it serve as a reminder that even in the realm of B-movies, extraordinary moments and unforgettable performances can emerge. As we welcome illegal aliens into the B-Movie Mania Hall of Fame, let us remember the brilliance of Anna Nicole Smith and Joni Lauer, two stars whose light may have been extinguished too soon, but whose legacy will forever illuminate the annals of cinema. Thank you, and may their memories continue to inspire us as we embrace the wonderfully bizarre world of B-Movies. What? <laughs>